here's the thing that you have to understand about being a human being, and this is really, really hard for people to wrap their head around. Humans are designed to struggle. So we're put in a world where normally day-to-day -day activity would be the difference between life and death. If you didn't work, you didn't eat. And even more important than that, if you didn't work today, then you wouldn't eat six months from now. So like there's this huge disconnect. There's this whole concept of sacrifice and delayed gratification and struggle in the moment that leads to reward later. It's built into us. It's part of every culture. You'll see it everywhere. That's where the entire concept of sacrifice comes from. It's this form of embodied delayed gratification that humans practice. And I mean everywhere. There's no such thing as a religion anywhere in the world that doesn't embrace some form of sacrifice, which again is just embodied delayed gratification. And that's always struggle. It's always challenge. So you'll see religions will promote things like fasting, which is a struggle. They'll promote things like hard work, which is a struggle. They'll promote things like, you know, going for long stretches of time sitting under a waterfall, or they'll go for long stretches of time walking. All of these types of things are all struggles, and it's because that's the way we're built. That's how humans are constructed. Fundamentally, at a very base level, we're built to struggle. So now we get into the modern world. In the modern world, we don't need to struggle day to day. That creates anxiety because there's a disconnect. You want to struggle. You're built to struggle. You're designed to struggle. But we don't struggle anymore. We wake up in the morning and it's, we're, we live in air conditioning. If we're hungry, we go to the fridge. If we're out of food, we go down to the store. Even if we're poor, we can find a food kitchen. Now again, this is modern world in the United States of America. We're not talking about third world countries where they still struggle with that kind of stuff. So what does all of that cause? All that causes, I mean, it's, it's even worse than that if, if you want to describe it as worse. If you want entertainment, you've got endless entertainment. If you want to, if you're bored, you've got a thousand choices for things to do to attack your boredom. And it's, it's too much. We have too much, too much of everything all the time. There was a book that came out a couple years ago called The Comfort Crisis that went really deep into all of these ideas. It's a great book. And it's just the simple fact that we don't struggle anymore. We don't feed that need to struggle so it causes tons of anxiety and tons of challenge and it just makes us depressed and and it's really just wreaks havoc on our emotions but it's crept into it's crept into our society so much that we don't I mean we don't think of struggle as a good thing but that's exactly what it is struggle is growth struggle doing difficult things makes you better Doing challenging things makes you stronger. And there's tons of this type of stuff in society that, that we don't even think of as what they are, which is kind of this, this artificial struggle. So take going to the gym, for example. People go and walk on a treadmill for an hour. Well, that's an artificial struggle. They don't have to do that. But they'll tell you how it makes them feel better. And obviously, I'm the exact same way with exercise. I don't, people didn't have to exercise a hundred years ago. They didn't go to the gym. They didn't buy weights. They didn't have pull-up bars. They worked out in the fields. They wrecked their bodies doing hard physical activity. Now we have to do that artificially. We have to set aside time. But here's the thing. It's worth it to set aside the time because your body's made for that. You're designed to do that activity. You're designed and built for that purpose. So doing that is good for you. It makes you feel better. 
The difficult part, the thing that we have a hard time wrapping our heads around is the fact that you have to do it every day. You have to do difficult things every day because you don't, you do, it's it's kind of this weird back and forth. You don't want to do difficult things because they're difficult, but you need to do difficult things because that's the way we're built. So always think about the, the old Greek story of Sisyphus. Sisyphus was the guy that Zeus punished by making him roll a boulder up the hill every day. So he'd roll the boulder up the hill, and at the end of the day, he'd roll back down. And that's for all time, and that's Zeus's punishment. Well, the existentialist saw this as an actual, a clear story of, this is a triumph. This is great news. You have to imagine Sisyphus as having a smile on his face. Because every morning he has something to do. Every morning he has a challenge. Every morning he has to take that boulder and he has to get that up the hill. And that's what you have to do. You have to think about what's your boulder. There's all, all kinds of boulders in life. You've got day in and day out every single day. You've got to take care of your kids. You've got to take care of your spouse. You've got to take care of your office team, your teammates at work. You have to take care of everybody. Watch over them. You have to pull the load of Everybody that's not pulling their own load or are incapable of pulling their own load, like your kids, you have to pull their load for them. And then you have to teach them how to pull their own load. You've got something to do every single day. And the more that you do those things, the more that you pile that kind of stuff on and the more challenge that you have, the bigger you become, the stronger you become, the more powerful you become, the bigger a load you can pull, the more you can do the less time that you have to do other things like sit and dwell and think and have anxiety and have boredom and have all these kinds of things like most people it's it's a it's a known psychological fact that most people experience boredom as anxiety so a psychologist might take apart if you say i feel anxious they might be able to take that apart and find out what you're not really anxious you're bored it doesn't mean that all anxiety is boredom, but it's a really common thing for people to experience boredom as anxiety. So if you've always got something to do, you've always got some activities, you've always got things happening, like Sisyphus. It sounds like a punishment, always pushing the boulder up the hill, but that's something to do. That's something to get better at. He can improve that. Well, he pushed it up the hill and it took him six hours today tomorrow it only takes him five and a half you know that's he can improve it he can get better that's what you are you're sisyphus every single day don't neglect your duties don't neglect the things that you have to do add on to the things that you have to do build up the things that you have to do and then grow Grow into those steps. Grow into those things. Put on yourself the challenges that only a bigger and stronger person can do. Grow into those challenges and do something that's hard. You'll become a better person and you'll, you'll become more powerful and more capable very quickly. I hope you found this interesting today. If you did, please do like, share, subscribe follow, do all of those things. Let other people know that uh, you saw it here with Joe Justice on Dad Bod Daily. And I hope to hear from you soon. Shoot me an email, shoot me a comment. Let me know that you saw this video and that you enjoyed it. 